Hello guys, welcome back to another video, CNC Guy aka Josh here. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how to use 2DR machining to machine a part. Okay, right, let's get into it. As you can see here, I've got an, a, an example part which I've just loaded in. I've already done my setup, so as you can see I've got my stock size here located around the job. So I've got about 5mm on each side to take off. I've always set my datum off the top of the job. Okay, so first things first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to machine these corner parts, and the best way to do that will be in 2D eye machining. So 2D eye machining, on my, on my uh, setup, I want to right click, I want to add a milling operation, and then click on eye machining 2D at the top. <clears throat> okay, so we have another pop up come up so from the technology i just want to rough it rough it at this time i can worry about the finishing at a later date so i want to click on i rough and then go to tool i want to pick my tool so if i open my master library um i'm just going to use a say this is an aluminium part so i'm just going to use 16 mil end mil so let's search for 16 mil end mil uh, search board diameter uh, carbide slot drill and mill slot drill yeah okay so let's select that okay so right <clears throat> so how does your machine recognize what to machine so basically you get four different options for feature recognition you have this one feature recognition by faces so if i want to do it by faces i actually select each face yeah, and it would actually know where to machine based on where my stock is. Okay, so let's unselect them. Let's have a look at the other one. So the next one is uh, feature recognition by chains. So I can actually pick a geometry around here. As you can see, I've got the yellow lines, which means it's an open edge, and the uh, purple pinky lines, which mean it's a wall, so it knows not to machine past here. So I could either do it that way, or the other way is feature recognition, um, outside feature recognition. So basically, this is recognize everything that's outside of the actual model, which is pretty handy. So as you can see, it's gonna because I haven't set the levels yet. It just thinks it's gonna machine down to there, so it can't actually go into the, the corners here. So if I was to change my level to say. 30 to the bottom of that you can see that all that blue there is the, is the stock that it wants to try and to, wants to try and machine okay and then the last one is just a chain chains without feature recognition so this one won't actually give you a visual a visual um guide of where your stock actually is um it just does it manually basically um so for the for this video i'm going to use the outside feature recognition for this first part i think so i'll have to reset that again so if you didn't want the, the actual preview on there you can actually disable it if you click on this button if, if it's in your way and you can't see anything um stock there's different your stock style is defined automatically from whatever you've set it at um, you can change that if you've got the, the models in there, um, STL foils or SolidWorks uh, models in there. You can actually use them to stock um, to define your stock. Um, you can click on this one, cut only rest material. This will automatically be on once you pick the size. But if you unclick it, um, basically, well, I haven't done any machining on this yet. But if I did, then it'd know to just machine the areas that it needs to machine. Um, extend pocket to stock yeah same sort of thing so it basically if you have that off it won't bring it to the full um to the edge of your stock it'll only bring it to the edge of the model uh, target feature i've already set that up as more 3d model um i've actually got a fixture in this at the moment as well but you have got fixture collision protection as well so if i had a fixture down here and i wanted to machine the whole lot if I had that on, then it'd be a clearance of two mil, so I know where it is and actually lift over the voice, which is pretty cool. 
Okay, so I've got my tool set now. See, all the data for the tool is actually um, preset based on what tool you've got in there. So I've got a 16 mil three flute in there. So all the feed and speeds are actually preset um, for this type of material. Uh, the coolant, through coolant, that's okay. So levels, let's swap that down to 30 mil again. Okay. So that one's set at 30 mil. Okay, so there we go. So stock's changed. So uh, stock has changed. It didn't a minute ago, so I just click on and off the cut rest material. But it's going to be found its way again. So it's going to try and machine all of that down to this 30 mil mark. Okay, so that's the level set. Uh, the, right, so the technology wizard. Um, basically, this is the machining level that you want it to set at. Uh, the higher the machine level, the bigger the cuts, and generally the faster the speed and feed. Um, so you can either set it to automatic step down. Um, in this case, it wants to try and go 29.71 because it wants to leave, and the technology wants to leave 0.3 on for a finish. So you can, you can change that and override that. Um, <clears throat> but it means here the yellow is like middle ground um you want this to be green really um because that gives it the optimal optimal conditions for this type of cutter um so if i go to use it defined i could actually define it by steps or step down so i'm going to go for steps so i've changed that to two steps okay see it's turned red um which is not optimal really so you've got red um yellow and green um Based on this cut, I think it'll only go to yellow because I think the actual flute size is too big for this job. Um, but if I was taking a bigger cut, say 40 mil, then that'll probably turn green. Um, but you, you can run it like this. It's just, um, it's not um, the optimal settings for it. Um, so if I run it as one step down, um, and then you can actually change your machining level. So if you look at the speed and feed down here, my step over max and min, they will actually change when I'll bring this down. So I can have it on machine in level one, it gives me an RPM of two and a half thousand, but it's only doing a max step over of one, um, which is not going to be that great to be honest. Um, so, I mean, it all depends on um, what sort of cut you're using, what um, tool holding you're using. Um, if it's a brand new cutter, uh, more depends on this. this is, you've got to take into effect all of these when you when you're programming it. So, um, for the purposes, I'm going to leave it on level eight. So we've got RPM at eight thousand one hundred and six, um, and then a feed of four thousand four hundred twenty-two millimeters per minute. Okay, so that's going to go pretty fast. Uh, step over max of three point eight, and then a minimum of 0.3. So probably on these big chunks here, it's going to go to three point eight, and then the fine one that will be in between there going down to point three okay so let's leave that one on so modifying cutter conditions you can actually override this i've already set my material database up and um, this is just a bit of a t6 aluminium um but you can actually override your max chip thickness your spindle control all of this and um, the tool material um you could run that up to 200 percent um but yeah, it all just depends on what, what cut you're using and your work holding and your tool holding. Okay, so if we go down to the next tab, technology. Um, technology, so all this is filled in anyway because it's step down. I've already done it in the technology wizard. Um, cutting direction, that's fine. We want to climb mill. And then the offsets, obviously, you can. And you can do a floor finish as well at the end. Um, I tend to use that um, just to do a finish. Um, it's a separate operation. Channels, so oil and motor, and you can have it on or off. Um, so basically, this will cut out all the middle ground first, and then go around the outside. Or you can have that off, and it will just cut all all the way over. I tend to just usually have it on. Um, you can modify channel channel parameters. Um, so you you got like your channel width. Um, and your wall thickness to leave on so you can actually change them but i tend to leave them um 
you sort so you've got complete z level which is always on you can always have that off or you can semi open um your pockets um or you can have them as closed um it all depends on what you're doing really um if we go to links so helical entry sensor cut in yes we do with the 16 mil slot um, so that's fine. The in-pocket position, so your Z clearance is basically the clearance that lifts up. So once it does one cut, instead of going up to your, um, your home position or your safe position and going back, it'll actually just lift up 0 0.8 off the top of the job and go around, which is pretty close, but it just speed things up a lot. Um, you can edit that. You can change that to whatever you want, whatever's comfortable. Um, Pre-drilling, um, pretty self-explanatory. We haven't really got pre-drill on this. We don't need one. Um, I think that covers everything for this outside, so let's see how it goes. So let's calculate this then. And there you go, as you can see, we've got our toolpath there. So let me just turn the preview off. As you can see, we've got toolpath going all the way around. Um, and that is going to take 47 seconds. Like I said, it depends on what crew you've got, um, so you can tweak it how you like it. Um, and if we actually run that in a simulation, we'll be able to see what it looks like. Okay, let's slow that down for a little bit. So let's go. So as you can see, it's just slowly taking away the corners first. And then it goes all the way around and does the outside and that's what it will look like okay so now what i want to do next is i want to do this outside as well so what i can do i can use the same feature recognition again so if i just um save and copy this it'll bring up a duplicate and then i just want to change my levels if I go to the bottom of the job there, plus uh, so it's going 12.3. The upper level is already set because I've used it as a duplicate, so it carries on because it knows where my where my stock is. So it knows just to machine this bottom half here. And then if we go to technology wizard again, so it's only doing a 12 mil cut um, on the end of the cutter, which is probably a bit too much um, for the size of the cutter. So I'll probably bring that down slightly. And then if we calculate that, there we go. There's the other operation for the outside. Okay, so let's bring that as a simulation so we can see it all in action. So we'll solid verify it. Uh, let's slow the simulation speed down. Okay. You can see it's taking the corners out first and then it'll go around and do the profile. And there we go. There's the second the second profile which we've done. So there's the outline roughed out. And we can go in and finish that however we want. We can actually do that as uh, within the R machine in um or we can just do it as like a profile, just a 2D profile. And then, right, so for the rest of the roughing, let's just turn this stock off to go. So it's a bit clearer. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do for the roughing finish on this one, I'm actually gonna rough the rough all the middle pocket out. So what I can do if I control C, control V that, so if I copy that. And then we don't want to be using the outside anymore because we've already machined that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this one here, chains without feature recognition. So I'll show you how this one works. So what we've got to do, um, we've got the right back position, that's fine. Um, we want to create a new geometry. And then we want to click on the inside here. Um, scroll down to constant Z. So there we go. So we've got a closed chain now. And then okay that okay so it won't actually give me any stock at the minute because i haven't set any level uh, levels so the upper level is zero it's fine the pocket depth of this one is 42. okay 
Okay, if I click on that, any rest material, there we go, there's my pocket. So it knows all that material is ready to be machined. Okay, now we don't need to do a pre drill hole because this is a slot drill with center cutting as well. So I can always just helicoil in um, and then start machining it out. So as you can see here, it wants to do it in one cut with 41.71 depth uh, step down. So if I did two cuts, it would do it in 20. Um, I'll leave it on the automatic for now because now it's got so it's got 65 mil flute length. So I'll probably do that in one hit. Um, and obviously just playing around with your, your step overs, your speeds and feeds with the different machining level. Um, and then uh, 41, yeah, that's okay. Okay, so let's calculate that. There you go, so there you can see my toolpath. It down and it's to work itself outwards in a spiral pattern. Actually, machine the inside. Okay, there's the pattern, and that one is taking five minutes four seconds, which is not too bad. So let's see that in action. So if I uh, put this in a simulation now, slow that down. There you go. You can see. So it's spiraled all the way down, then it will work its way outwards until it's roughed it all out. then I say if you try this on the machine it's not working it doesn't sound right there's a bit of vibration or anything you can always change your step overs and your feed to speed to modify it to how to suit suit your machine and your tooling so there we go that's that all nice and roughed out just ready for some finishing cuts now okay so if you click on the updates start and actually see it here there we go compared to the actual model that's how it's looking at the moment. Okay, so I think that is the eye rough concluded for this video, guys. Um, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. If you've got any um, any questions or anything, um, please leave them under the comments, and I'll be sure to get back to you. I can um, do any videos on whatever subjects you you want me to. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon.